This is the average impact position of every club champion in America. That, that impact position. Not this impact position. This is closer to this than this. And if anybody has some money in a Brinks truck and wants to lose, we'll start going around. You're not gonna hand pick your people. It's a fact. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm here with Brian Manzella. Hey Brian. Good to see you too. Great to be here. Brian's a pro from Louisiana, one of the top uh, 20 or so coaches in, the, in America. And originally I saw you, Brian, because I was, when I learned golf, I didn't learn until I was like 24. And it was at a golfing machine place. Like the guy was a GSED and uh, probably a guy you know, yeah. uh, David Werzer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so, uh, Dr. yep, Dr. Dave. The golfing machine, if you don't know, is it's like a, a 10 yeah, second so primer on what is the golfing machine. So a guy who had an engineering background, was enough PhD engineering or anything like that, came home to Cali, had a little success on his own and go. Then it went away, like an original success. None of the golf pros he asked in, in, in Seattle could give him an answer. Like, it, it worked here, look what happened. So yeah, he, one he, day out of nowhere, he was a bad golfer. He shot like 74 or something. Yeah, like one of his first rounds. So anyway, he 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 went on this 28 gear project of writing this stuff down and it turned into the golf machine, a way to say, you know, Raymond Floyd, you know, took it back like this and then lifted it. And Jack Nichols took it back like this and did this. And then they got people like Sergio that look like they have yeah. this big angle. And they got people like David Thompson don't have that angle. And at the end of the day, they're all real good. And then they got people that look like they make pretty swings and they can't beat me. So what is it? And he tried to catalog, catalog it and categorize the pieces of the golf swing that could be done differently. You, you can have the club in your hand one way, then you can have the club in your hand the same way, but the face is different, right? So he put all of those things down and he had no real golf swing that came from it like it was without just, even really like instruction to make someone better in mind it was, no no it was just like a way that this is what he thought best he could figure went on in the swing here were some things he thought a few things very small things that you probably need to have and then all these other swings work all those different swings you see on tv and in the historical books and videos that everybody watches like on your channel and they work. Why did they work? And then what happened over time is you got humans in the human condition. They got comfortable with certain pieces and parts from the book. You got some of that. I did too, because I went to work with Ben Doyle, who was the first authorized instructor, and then had a very, I guess the right word would be love for a certain pattern. Yeah. Maximum participation, like really laggy, kind of. really laggy. Okay. Big, big backswing, really laggy pattern that really thumped the ball and compressed the ball, so to speak. And uh, not, not, not hit it low, well, but just, he, just, he had a certain bunch of things he wanted. And over the years, the golf machine, not just because of Ben, but a lot of different people, they, it got associated with, you know, keeping your left wrist flat through the ball, which I, I, I don't think one page of all seven editions of the book, it ever says to keep your left wrist flat pass the ball. Okay. okay. But but if you got golf machine instruction at some point twenty years ago, you were probably taught to have your left yeah. flat pass the an impact and then flying wedge and things like that. Yeah, and, 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 and it's gotten yeah. bastardized just yeah. horrifically. Okay. And, and 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 so in my background with it is okay, I learned from the guy who knew it the best. And I was told he didn't know it the best. So I went and learned from that guy and what I found out was on, on driving ranges you know, like this that I taught at with regular people that a lot of the information in, in my own game was just not right. And and then over, over time, another Ben Doyle protege, Michael Jacobs, who Ben told me about a million years ago, we we got together because she found the same mistakes. You know, like you had to teach around the book. When I was getting a golfing machine instruction, you know, early on, not even really knowing that I was getting it, what I took out of it was that um, some of the guys who were really good at golf were hitting the ball like this, and I was hitting the ball like this. Like, yeah. no exaggeration. I was like this. But no matter what I did, I couldn't, I could maybe get it a little better, but never into this kind of condition right. that I saw the really good. 
players had. I'm going to ask you this. When you didn't quite go up, like, you know, some picture of some golfer that had fallen, yeah. where did the ball pretty much go when you had the shot? Uh, it went pretty straight, yeah. very high. Yeah. And what you were doing was trying to find a way to line the club up for impact so you could hit a shot that went straight. And it didn't include having your hands on they can, the people who love this wide open body, really laggy, well, we're not laggy, but forward hands position. Yeah. But they don't tell you as those people have lots of speed and most of them learn to play golf in this order. You learn to play golf, you slice it. Somebody, someone, some book, some video, some YouTube channel teaches you a couple things. You don't slice it anymore. You hook, then you take the hook away and now you can play. Find out what you do. Yep. That's generally how it works. Most of the people who learn to lag it a bunch were never taught to lag. I'm, I did a seminar, like, like I'm kind of doing this week, with pros at Sergio's golf course with Sergio's dad. And he was dead. And I asked a very exact question about what he taught Sergio. At not at any point in time did he ever teach a big angle between the left one and the left. And so here's a guy who was who everybody likes to use as a look at lag is good. Yeah. And he learned it completely organically. He never posed the position that like this. Okay. So that, that the problem is you tried to learn lag. I tried to learn. Yeah. lag angle, not lag press. I definitely had a huge slice when I started. There's no doubt. For sure. And then, so you're saying you mostly when people are flipping, that's a compensation that they've made in order to get straight. Yeah, so there's two ways that, there's two ways for this golf club right here. Put out the dirt on it. There's two ways for this golf club to close. It can just close by going around the clock. It's pointing like I'm pointing, you know, here. Now it's pointing way. I didn't do anything but make the club go around the clock. It's very open. So the club going around the clock open and close the face. Yes. And I can twist the shaft. And open and close. So let's just say I don't have enough shaft twist and I'm coming into the ball. I can either hit a shot that looks like Phil Minkles in a lap shot, or I can so called back the grip up. That looks pretty straight. It'll kind of go that way. So it's one of the two ways to close it. And the twisting part isn't there, which is a lot that's I think is going like at the over a thousand degrees a second, twisting closed down by the ball. You didn't have that either because you grip or you weren't taught that or just your swing evolved that way. You were you, you led the around the clock substitute for the twist. So when a golfer comes to you and and they have the, the shaft like that, you don't really look at this as like one of the there was a time where somebody would come to me and they would look like that at impact and they weren't much of a goal for you. Yeah. I would teach them to hit. A little bitty shot and keep this left wrist absolutely. Yeah. Then I would teach him to hit a little longer shot. And, and, and the success rate of that, looking back at it, was downright terrible. Yeah. You could get him to hit a chip shot, but it had no real correlation to how good of a golfer they And one day I was, I, I, I was, Doing, I used to do a lot of ten lesson practice. And I had a lady, and she was probably in her mid thirties, and she was very coordinated. However, not strong or super athletic. I, you know, first lesson just chipping, second lesson picking you know, that. Anyway, she's on lesson seven or eight. Seven or eight, and you're hitting a drive. Oh, we've already hit a seven iron full in the last lesson. So here's this lady that I've taught. Never had a golf club in her hand. Perfect grip, perfect setup. Could pose a good top of the backswing position. He's taught way too much of this garbage through the ball. And she's hitting his driver really bad. So this is about 89, 90, 1989, 1990. I started teaching in 83. So I went to see Ben Doyle in 87. So I had a few years of none of that. And a couple of years of teaching that and i'm looking at this lady going if this lady would have came to me the first week i was teaching golf, all i was doing was looking at what they did and say that's not right and i just dove in there and i had a talent fixed me she would have been better in the first half hour the first lesson 
from the first week I taught golf, here I am, all these years later, golf machine instructor, blah, blah, blah. She, she was taught so-called perfect way, short to long life. It was terrible. And that was the day I started back. And now it took me too long now. Yeah. I, did, I didn't do a Deion Sanders backup. It was like, yeah. you know, like Grandma Moses. Yeah. But I backed up away from that to the point now where maybe two or three times a year, I'll give a, we're just going to have to work on impact as a thing. Just impact two or three lessons a year, not a week, a year. And it was everybody who couldn't beat me that flipped it. All I'm saying is all you social media teachers who teach this, you're going to find out too. If your lesson, if your income doesn't depend on views or hits or people paying 20 a month or whatever, if it's really for people you gave a good lesson and they're coming back, but they're going to tell their friends, I used to slice it. Once see this man's other guy, I took two lessons. I don't slice it anymore. You should go see him. If your lesson, if your your lively livelihood depends on getting people better, you will abandon this stuff through the ball at some point in your teaching career. And pretty much almost everybody who ever taught it dogmatically at some point, if you went and got every club champion in the country, well, let's just say the, the new Golf Digest and Golf Magazine best courses. Go get those people. So you don't want to do 10,000 courses. Do the top 100. Doesn't matter. And you put them on a perfect lot. And you give them a six iron. And you say, okay, pro, what's your name? Joe? Okay, Joe. Hit a six iron until you pull up. Yeah. Here's three Here's three balls of your choice for, for the effort. I'd have a line around the corner. But he's the club champion now. Yeah. And he hits this ball. And he says, that's, that's my good six iron. This is the average impact position. I'm gonna get a ball so you can see this. This is the average impact position of every club champion in America. That that impact position. Not this impact position. This is closer to this than this. And if anybody has some money in a Brinks truck and wants to lose, we'll start going around. You're not gonna hand pick your people. It's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you a perfect example. I play in a club. Okay. One day we're going to become a USGA club because you can do that if you just have a group of people. Sure. And the, the, the ringleader of this club, because I taught him from scratch, he didn't play golf for 20 years, threw the ball, looks like this. From down the line, looks like this. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> He's an 18. Oh. He swings eight degrees inside out. He's got 85 mile an hour club head speed. He doesn't get in the air with a driver. We've tried 20 degree lofted drivers. Now, I've had him in my studio and I can get him to hit 200 yard shots pretty good. But I'm just saying, he's doing the two biggest things in social media. He has a decent amount of, 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 of so-called lag angle. He has a better than John Rahm threw the ball up his left arm better than John. Less going into extension than John Rahm threw the ball. And from down the line, he doesn't tip the shaft 1% this way. He can't hit a driver at all. If he could hit a driver, he'd be a nine. Mm -hmm. this, angle does, this angle does not work if you don't have the club head speed to get the ball in the air. Now, if you've got a seven iron. How much speed do you think? His swing would work at 100. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. 14, 15 degree loft the driver effect. And you say he's like more at 85. Yeah. Eight, eight, no, he is 85. Okay. <laughs> like if he swings yeah. at it fast. Yeah, right. So, and, and, and there's a lot of people now out there, out there perusing around the internet trying to learn from, you know, good folks like yourself that swing 90. Yeah. That swing, his, he's got a 90 would be better. He'd probably be a 15 instead of an 18. It wouldn't be a driver worth looking at. Okay. And people just don't realize that John Rahm can have his hands this far forward because he's got a 102 mile an hour club at speed for the five. Right. Probably cruising. Mm -hmm. I've got 86. Yeah. I can I can lean the shaft forward. He I would dream to lean. I'm overtrained. Okay. It's the ball's not gonna, it's not gonna even look like a shot. It's gonna look like wow, that's a really nice cool stinger. <laughs> You know, and, and, and it's a hundred times more important to get the speed out to the club end than to try to like retain some sort of angle to get the speed, which doesn't guarantee anything 
or definitely what we're talking about here, which is the, the look of a pretty impact position through the ball. It's just not something that the best players, whoever the best three players are in this range right now, I'd make the same bet with you that I, I, I talked about with the club champion. It's probably like this. You know, when I put when I when I took the best three players and the worst three players and you put them together, oh no no no, the way we're doing have more than the worst. But 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 again, we get the little girl right there. I can see her left hand grip. It looks like Corey Pavin's putting. Right. Right. So there's no way once she gets back. Look at this club face. So if she if she hits a shot with that grip, yeah, I made a really pretty decent little swing at the speed she could. It was 45 yards offline. So now, but if she does this just a little bitty bit, yeah, which would look horrific to people from this view, right? Better shot. Okay. Now you got a problem, see? So she likes it. Mm -hmm. You know, she likes it, but but a face-on freezer, a freeze, a freeze frame of her impact is gonna look. The first that shot I just hit 45 yards offline, 45 degrees offline, probably half look, lean. Yeah. Probably look like that. Yeah. The one that she would fudge. She ain't gonna like it. She's gonna go, oh, you gotta, you gotta keep your head down. You know, she starts hanging on her right foot, starts doing this. Right. Of course, I fat, but I'm just saying, she flushed it off a of mat. Better than that one. Yeah. So now you, that's what happened to you. You got feedback that told you this was better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, guys, so, so we're going to talk more about this. Uh, we have some really cool equipment to, to show some of this stuff in, uh, in good detail for really uh, the extreme golf nerd that wants to know it, but also for the average golfer that wants to get better. So just uh, con containing it, you're, you would say that golf lessons were maybe in general better when pros had less technology and were just doing grip, stance, ball position, basics definitely. than they were like in maybe 95 or, or De definitely not so i, I oh, wouldn't no. i wouldn't okay. say that so okay. so overall the last 20 years mm -hmm. the mean or whatever you know like average or whatever the best statistical way of saying it golf lesson has gotten infinitely better it's just too easy to get the information the sharing is better but the chance that you could take somebody with talent yeah. And ruin them has gone up every year in the 40 years I've been teaching. At the baseline lesson yeah. that that little girl would get if she walked into this pro shop and said, I like a lesson. You know, one, there's like seven people that teach here, including our friend John Ortega. She randomly gets a lesson. They're going to fix that grip. They're not going to teach her to super open it at the top. They're going to teach her a nice little pivot. She's going to be fine way better than they could in 1995. Okay. But somebody who has status on the pga tour and wins that's a small group of people yeah tour winners can get messed up more now than at any time in history real quick with some just not good for them information and and a lot of those people like you you know they just overdid stuff that well-meaning stuff that didn't help you and set you out on this search right right and me too same search all right, guys, if you want to see more about Brian, I think the best way to see him and connect with him is through his Instagram, which is really great. Uh, what's your Instagram? It's, it's all at Brian Manzella, Twitter and all that, at Brian Manzella. Postmodern Golf is me and Michael Jacobs' little home on, okay. on Facebook. But just give us a look. Yeah, ch uh, check him out. And you'll see lots more videos here with Brian on Be Better Golf. See you.